Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's Rich Rides. Um, today we're just going to do something real quick. Uh, it's a battery replacement. I haven't seen a video of an actual battery replacement for the uh, Gen 2 Super Duke R. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that today. Um, should be a very straightforward process. So first and foremost, um, here is the new battery that we're going to be putting in. Um, this is an Amazon brand. Uh, it's called Mighty Max Battery. It is a lithium-ion battery. Uh, it's just on a battery tender right now. Um, I just received it today um, just to kind of um, get it to 100% charge. There's a little button right here. You can go ahead and test. Uh, there's a green light at the very top indicating that it's ready to go. Um, so let's get straight into it. All right, so to get us started, um, just take your key. Go ahead and unlock the passenger seat. Stick this over here. You're going to grab all your paperwork, registration, just stuff that, that you should just keep out of the way. <coughs> and then the seat is just going to pick up, slide back just like that. Stick this over here as well. And. I don't know actually if this is, it looks factory, um, there's actually a USB plug um, on these bikes. Um, you just plug a USB cable right into there, you can run it up here, charge your thing, um, whatever. Um, and then also I noticed on the back of the passenger seat, there's actually something that KTM calls its tech box. So you can see tech box right there, <coughs> printed. And basically, um, I'm not 100% sure what this is for. Um, I believe you push down right here to open it, <coughs> and when it flips over, there's this little pocket, and, uh, this is good an idea, but, I mean, my phone, it doesn't quite even fit right here, um, you can see it kind of hangs off, maybe today's phones are just a little bit bigger than when the, uh, Super Duke first came out, maybe this is for a battery pack, um, to charge underneath, there is a little cable outlet right here. I thought this was pretty interesting, pretty unique. Um, <clears throat> nice of KTM to kind of think about um, something like that and integrating that. So we'll set that back over here. <clears throat> so aside from this USB right here, um, there's going to be one bolt that's right here. Uh, eight millimeter bolt or a T30. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that off. I just took an eight millimeter. It's just a little bit more accessible for me. Pull that bolt off, set that right there, and you'll pick this up. Um, there is a little rubber thing that you can pull up right here that should release your ECU. Uh, there's three of them, one on each side. So just work your way around. Give them a pull up. You should be able to remove this tray minus the USB if you can just kind of set it there. Um, and then it looks like, here's your battery, um, it does look like to make this as easy as possible, um, we should disconnect the battery first, then go ahead and unplug the ECU, that'll make it a lot easier to um, pick the battery up and out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Grab a eight millimeter wrench right here. And we'll undo this battery terminal. So with batteries, um, in case you are new to kind of wrenching on your own vehicle, uh, always the negative first. That prevents any sort of short circuiting or uh, anything like that from happening. This is actually a battery tender, so uh, don't mind this. this. You may not have this on yours unless you do have a battery tender as well. This is going to be the actual negative cable. So we're going to go ahead and just set that somewhere where it won't contact any sort of ground. I actually have not removed this ECU before, so uh, we'll be learning this together. Um, it appears to have a center press section so we'll go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver. Don't mind my my dog just hanging out right there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and depress that center section. See if this slides back. Yep, there you go. 
So once um, this will rotate just like that, and then it will slide off. Same thing. So for this one, you'll push down the center, and then it will just come undone, just like that. Okay. There's our ECU for the motorcycle. So now you have all these connectors. Um, you can just kind of leave them out of the way. Uh, maybe bend them a little bit. It shouldn't be that necessary. So we're going to come back, grab our 8 millimeter for the positive now. And we're just going to undo that. much longer bolt than the other one was. Okay, I'm just going to pull that, give it a little uh, wedge. Okay, uh, not sure how I'm going to pick this battery up, it's pretty tight. Okay, there you go. Okay, this thing is heavy. Here's the slot where the battery was. Um, you can kind of see it from the outside. It's just this piece right here. Um, really straightforward, actually. That's that's pretty pretty convenient, pretty nice. All right, so uh, we have our comparison of our two batteries right here. This is the new lithium ion. This thing probably weighs no more than like two or three pounds. Meanwhile, this thing is oh, this thing's probably ten. 10-ish pounds, so that's a good weight loss um, right there. Um, I'm wondering how much. So included in the packaging for the battery, you're going to have these foam pads. And it's basically just because this battery is so much more compact, you can kind of insert these foam pads in there to make up the difference. So uh, height-wise, that way your connectors are all in the relative same place. So if I connect, if I stick two of those together, you're still a little short. If I take that one out and put this larger one underneath, then you have one that's a little... Actually, that's about right. So, for the purposes of the 2017 through 2019 um, Super Duke R, you're going to have two of the thicker foam pads. This one, notice it's a little thinner. You can see that. And uh, so, working on that. Um, basically, each of these has a little adhesive. So, you peel off the adhesive. Uh, and then go ahead and stick it on the bottom side of the battery. So I'll do that now. All right, so we've gone ahead and stuck those two um, foam pads underneath. Um, I figure I'd just give you guys a, comp a comparison of the specs of this battery. So this one uh, is a factory battery. It's a Yuasa uh, YTX14-BS. Um, it is a 200 cold cranking amps battery, um, which is, you know, it's okay for its size. Um, this lithium ion battery, um, unfortunately it doesn't actually say on the battery itself, however I do have the uh, Amazon listing here. So um, you have, it's a 12.8 volt, uh, 280 cold cranking amps, um, 98.99, um, and this battery actually weighs uh, a pound and a half, so that's excellent. Uh, you have a much lighter battery, and you have uh, a much higher cranking amp ability, so uh, the starting should be much stronger. Um, I changed one of these on a previous Yamaha R1, and uh, it just made the crank process just so much stronger, and the bike turned over so much faster. So um, we'll get this back installed right now. This uh, Amazon battery did not come with the usual hardware um, that these batteries do. Um, I bought a previous one. It's actually right here. Um, it's a Firepower. This is a great battery as well. Um, I just figured just try something new. Um, the price difference between these two is probably only $10. Um, and this one came with hardware and um, new hardware. So for these, uh, for this purpose, we'll just go ahead and reuse our old hardware. Um, so these two, uh, you'll pop them out of right here. And you'll go ahead and just set them in here. And then when you go ahead, you'll just put a bolt through. And it'll secure it. Just slot this in. Just going to slide right in. Super.
super easy, super buttery. Um, we'll go ahead and take, uh, when you reconnect a battery, you always want to do your positive first. Thread it through. This is going to be your battery tender connector, and then this is going to be the factory positive connector. So, ooh, interesting. We may run into an issue um, here where the wire does not bend that close. You can see on the factory battery, the terminal is actually much closer to the edge, versus on this one, it seems to be a little further. Alright guys, so this is the solution that I came up with. Um, basically I took this positive connector and I bent it 90 degrees. Um, it will line up with the bolt, push the bolt in. Um, it's all tightened now. Um, the negative side went in uh, pretty much without a hitch. Uh, very straightforward. Just, uh, just connect that bolt in through both the uh, battery tender for me as well as the factory uh, negative connector. Um, when you connect that ba negative battery connector, you will have uh, just a couple little sparks. Nothing to worry about. Um, it's just the uh, electrical connection be uh, becoming connected. So uh, stick that in. Uh, you have your little nut in there being held. Um, so everything here is pretty tight. Go ahead and uh, just reassemble uh, some stuff. So we'll take the cover, uh, stick it back. It will actually, um, if you can see under here, there is two bolts underneath, and you'll slide the tray uh, underneath those two bolts. And then go ahead um, and just make sure everything will sit down in the proper location. And we'll go ahead and take our original bolt and tighten that down right here. Okay, so there's that, uh, that piece, um, and then we will go ahead, actually, you know what, I don't know if I can use this piece anymore. So this is the factory KTM positive connector. Um, generally, it's shielded um, just to prevent, you know, you from electro uh, electrocuting yourself. However, with the way that the connector is now bent to the side, um, that would basically come out right here. So that will probably not work. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. It is shielded underneath. Uh, there's no opening here. And then the seat will come over and actually cover that. So for the most part, we should be okay with that one. I'll update you guys if anything does happen to it. So I guess I will put this in the toolkit just for safekeeping. And then we're going to go ahead and reconnect our ECU. All right, so I'm not applying any pressure to the lever um, itself. It's just moving on its own. So you'll just go ahead and push from the back. And then at the very end, you'll just, there'll be a very pronounced click. And that will be in place. Uh, go ahead and just push these back onto the rubber grommets that were there before. One, two, and... This one's a little bit of a pain. Should make it go over easier. Sticking a screwdriver in there. Just go ahead and push down. Work its way down there. Okay, and that is that. Um, super straightforward. Um, that's all. We'll just take our seat. Um, on the seat, actually, you do have um, suspension settings um, that are from the factory. You have your basic comfort, basic uh, sport and max payload, and then a racetrack only type setup. Um, you can start with these. Uh, you can start dialing them in uh, if you feel that certain uh, you want it a certain way uh, over another. Um, and then on here, on the bottom, you also have your chain tensioning diagram. Um, basically. Uh, there are there's a little tab uh, down below here, um, and you want to make sure your chain tension is between those two. So actually, since we're here, I'll just go ahead and show you that real quick. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Um, you have your two tabs right here, and you basically just want to lift the chain up and make sure from a horizontal level, make sure that it fits between those two. 
and that is that, that's that's that. So let me go ahead, bolt that seat back in. Tools. And our registration. guys that's going to do it for the uh, battery replacement super easy procedure um, just one little thing that I had to kink to make it work um, maybe it took me an extra 10 minutes just to kind of figure out make sure everything was going to fit overall time uh, to replace the battery should take you no more than 30 minutes for first try um, if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below um, but for now that's going to be it thanks for watching